Hello everyone, welcome back to the YouTube channel. My name is Rachel Langston and I am a craft producer for Makers Gonna Learn, your hub for endless inspiration, education, and motivation for your die cutting machine. If you have one and you want to learn how to master it, click the first link in the description below to see how you guys can become a member of Makers Gonna Learn. In today's video, we're gonna talk about 12 facts about your new Cricut you probably didn't know. So this is great for Cricut beginners or maybe even some seasoned Cricut crafters who just maybe didn't realize that these things were so important. So today I'm really excited to share with you all these 12 things that I feel will really help you guys understand your machine better and maybe uh, give you more motivation to know that maybe you don't have to spend a ton of money on materials like you thought you might and so on and so forth. So without further ado, I'm really excited to get into this video. The first thing I want you all to know, which is sometimes not very clear, a lot of Cricut newbies don't know it, you do not have to pay for design space. Design space in itself is free to use. It is a free software. If you purchase a Cricut or you have a Cricut and you know you want to use it, that's free. Design space is free to use for all Cricut owners. So that is an amazing thing that you guys get to uh, have free. A completely, you know, cost, it costs you nothing. So that's something that a lot of people actually don't know. They think they must have Cricut access in order to be able to use uh, their Cricut design space and that's simply not true. So I wanted to blow some minds and let you all know you do not have to buy, purchase, or pay to use Cricut design space. Number two, you actually need to do something called calibrating when your machine may seem not to print and cut as well. You might be able to tell that maybe it's cutting a little bit of, uh, a little bit too much on the side of an image or something like that. So it needs to be calibrated. Calibration in itself is something that you guys actually need to do periodically to your machine. It's kind of like maintenance. You need to maintain your machine and that really does help tremendously. So if you guys want to know a little bit more about calibration and how to do it, Miss Becca, the other craft producer here that works alongside me, made an amazing video all about how to calibrate your machine. So I will link that down below. And uh, I do want to mention, stop right here and mention, I get a lot of comments on videos like this saying, well, Rachel, why do you make videos to reference to other videos? Well, guys, I make videos and this one here is kind of like a roundup of a lot of things I want you guys to know. But if you come to this video and you want to know how to calibrate your machine, it would be a little harder if in the future you guys were trying to find this video maybe to calibrate your machine in the future and you had to skim through 12 different facts to try and learn how to calibrate it when we have a very concise video all about that uh, just for you guys. So instead of me demonstrating some things that I have linked below, it's a lot easier for me and for you all to be able to click those as you need them to reference them. It's a lot easier for you guys to find. So while it might be a couple of more steps for you, one or two more clicks, it is worth it, I promise. I hope that you all do enjoy these Roundup type videos as they are very, very fun to put together and they're very, very informative. So I hope you all learn a lot through this video. So. Like I mentioned, if you want to know exactly how to calibrate your machine, Miss Becca has that video that I will link down below for you guys. But it's something super fun that you need to be able to do in order to have perfect, flawless print and cut projects. Number three is that as we all know, your Cricut does not tell you when to change your blade. So you guys need to have your eyes open and look for signs on when your blade needs to be changed. Uh, again, I do have a video on this. However, I will give you some bullet points now as well as link that short concise video for you all in the uh, description below. Things like your paper tearing or having to make multiple cuts or things ripping that normally didn't rip, uh, all types of things like that. Your blade seems to be dragging on your material instead of cutting it through, all of those things can contribute to needing your blade to be replaced. Now, some of it, very few cases might be that your mat actually isn't sticky enough. So a lot of times when we put a material on our mat and our mat is not sticky enough, the blade, just the sheer pressure of the blade will start to move that material on the mat, thus ruining our cut. So make sure you do cross that T and dot that I and make sure that your mat is good and um, clean and sticky and that your material is nice and secure on the mat. If you've done that and you're still seeing signs of tearing and ripping and dragging and having 
having to cut it multiple times on a you know more pressure then make sure that you do change that blade make sure you have multiple blades handy multiple replacement blades always on hand for you guys and number four, we're talking about a material in this one, and that material is Cricut brand transfer tape. Now, if you see us, if you watch a lot of our videos, you know that we use nine times out of 10 masking paper transfer tape. We love how cheap it is. We love the versatility of it. We love the ease of use. However, if you guys wanted to use Cricut brand transfer tape, you totally can. We have several rolls unopened, much like this one in the craft studio, and you can use it. It's a good product on most, you know, most surfaces. So one thing about this that you probably didn't know is that you can actually reuse Cricut brand transfer tape. Now the kind we use here, our masking paper transfer tape, because it is so cost effective and because it is very mild in um, the way that it can adhere, uh, we throw it away after each use, which works really well for us. However, this stuff is a lot stickier and a lot more expensive. So at least to get your money's worth, we recommend using this several times. I myself actually did a test several years ago and I was able to use it seven times. Now, to be fair, around time four or five, it got pretty unsticky to where I was having to work a little harder at burnishing my designs, but I was still able to use this several times. So do not use it once and throw it away. That is something you might not know, but you can totally reuse your Cricut brand transfer tape. The next point I want to make guys that you might not know is that you actually don't have to use Cricut brand everything. You really don't. We actually prefer different brands in a lot of different areas when it comes to Cricut materials and tools and techniques. So first of all, these Crayola markers are so, 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 so cheap and they work beautifully with the Maker uh, and also the Explorer too. They work well with the Cricuts and because they are fine tip but they're markers, they actually go on a little bit thicker in your words to look a little better. So I actually prefer this. If you want to know how to interchange this with Cricut pens, I do have a video on it, but it's as easy as putting it in your clamp, guys. It is so simple, but if you want the training on it, it will be linked down below. Next up is burnishing tools. You guys know the Cricut scraper tools that come in some of the kits for the weeding tools, and it's jagged. It's like a hard plastic, and guys, once that you knock it on a couple things or that you use it, it becomes almost sharp. And when you're burnishing your vinyl down on your mat, it will actually scrape it. And we got so frustrated and fed up with that. And then we found these that are kind of like a, a bendy. It's a little bit more malleable, a little more bendy. And we really, really love these. These are from a 143 vinyl and they are technically called squeegees, but we love these for burnishing all of our projects. It's a must have. We have these in every craft room, multiple ones. Uh, they come in some really cute colors. We love it. So that is what we use to burnish. And if you guys don't know, um, you will want to burnish uh, all vinyl projects that you use. So we do use that quite often. Next are weeding tools. So here are two weeding tools that we use most often here in the craft space. Here's the pin pin tool from 651 uh, Vinyl, uh, which is now known as 143 Vinyl, but as you can see on some of the products, they still say 651 Vinyl. So it is 143 Vinyl, and they carry these pin pin tools, and it is kind of like a sharp needle on the end, but it looks like a regular pin. It's super safe, and it's amazing to weed little bitty cuts and really detailed uh, vinyl and HTV projects, perfect. And then the next one, guys, is this uh, hook tool. Now, this mimics the Cricut one a lot. You guys know what I'm talking about, the Cricut hook tool. It's called a weeder tool in Cricut. But, guys, that one, the tip bends, and it is so frustrating. We went through so many a month, and we're not that hard on our tools, guys, but we weed. We weed a lot, and these have not bent yet, and these are honestly guys off Amazon. They're like $5.99 and we love them. We love them. Becca has a bunch. Uh, we all have them strewn around the office. We love these. So we highly recommend these way over the Cricut weeder tools because they bend and they break so easy. So this is a much better quality tool for cheaper. So we love that. Next cause is vinyl itself. You do not have to get Cricut brand vinyl. Now we love all types of vinyl, however, you know, whatever type you want, but we really love Starcraft 
permanent adhesive for uh, as far as vinyl goes they have 65 colors you can get them in 12 by 12 sheets all the way up to like by the yard you can get them at like 10 feet I think with the actual vinyl you can get 10 yards which is what 30 feet that's like so much and guys in the HTV which is Caesar easy weed we absolutely adore it. You can get it in bulk too if you order it from 143 Vinyl. We do place orders there several times a month to restock our supply. But the colors are great. The quality is great. So we really like StarCraft Premium Vinyl and we love the Caesar Easy Weed. So neither of those are Cricut brand and they work fabulously. Um, moving along to transfer tapes, uh, how we were talking earlier about how you can reuse your transfer tape from Cricut because it's so sticky. This is what we prefer to use on, I want to say like 95% of our projects. It's it's basically just a really wide roll of masking tape um, and it's great. You can rip it, you can cut it, you can use it for all different types of projects and you don't feel like you're wasting any. It is so cheap on Amazon. We have several new ones of these laying around because we literally can't live without this so we love it so these are just a few things that goes to show you guys you do not have to get Cricut brand everything you will run your bank account dry and it is not worth it I promise so leave it to us who have collectively been crafting for over 20 years all together and you take your advice and allow us to help you guys save some money and not sacrifice on quality Next up guys, we're talking about mats. Now when your mats get dirty and grimy and not sticky and filled with glitter and gunk, don't throw them away just yet. There are several ways that you can go about cleaning these that just take no time at all. The favorite has to be a baby wipe. Literally guys, I could demonstrate it, but it's so easy. You take a baby wipe and you gently wipe your mat off. It cleans it. You might freak out at first and think, oh my gosh, it's not sticky at all. It's just because the mat is wet. Just don't press too hard, clean the whole mat and it will look like new. Let it have some time to dry and it looks incredible. The next way is with on dishwashing liquid and the third way is with LA's totally awesome both are great but the favorite seems to be the baby wipes which you guys can use and if you want to see demonstrations of these uh, Tanner actually has a very detailed super nice video demonstrating not one not two but all three of those different um, products on cleaning mats so why don't you guys watch that I'll link it down below and you guys can decide for yourself which way you want to clean your mats but for heaven's sake don't throw your mats out yet clean them to give them a couple more weeks of use or months of use and you know just get the most out of your mats get the most bang for your buck so that is a great way uh, to save money and not waste uh, a perfectly good mat that just needs a little wipe down so that is another thing you might not know is not to throw away your mats yet make sure you try and clean them and next up guys there are a lot of different ways that you can do something in design space and the important thing is for you guys to find which one works for you i'm going to demonstrate a couple of those right now so if you take this camper cut file that we have one of our many cute little camper cut files and let's say we want to duplicate it well we can see the duplicate button is right here or we can right click and click duplicate that way. The same way as if we wanted to click this and then click delete on our keyboard or we can click uh, right click and click delete this way. Uh, so yeah there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You can actually uh, command C and then command V and paste or you can uh, right click and click copy and then paste. There's just so many different things that you guys can do in design space. Another really fun one that you guys can do is if we just type out hello. Let's say you wanted to ungroup this. So you can right click, select ungroup, or you can go up to the top and click ungroup or you can click this right here advanced and ungroup to letters there's they all do the exact same thing guys that's what i mean by there's a lot of different avenues you can take in design space to reach the same destination now that being said there's not a right way and a wrong way it's just whatever you're more comfortable with whatever you're used to if you're used to right clicking and duplicating that's fine if you would rather right click and press delete that's fine if you want to click this and then click ungroup from up here in the layers panel that's fine 
everything is personal preference but one reason why design space might be so overwhelming to Cricut newbies is because there's so many buttons so many things to choose so many things to do but in reality there's not that much to do in here there's just so many different ways to do it that it looks confusing so I hope that that did help you and maybe it was something you probably didn't know but there are several different ways that you can do just about any task in design space just find what works for you Something else you might not know about your Cricut and its capability is that it can actually be compatible with a lot of different devices. Here in uh, the studio at Makers Gonna Learn, we use a lot of Macs. So we'll use the Mac desktop. We actually have a Windows computer. We have uh, laptops. These are Mac laptops. Um, this is a, a Pro. Uh, we have a cell phone. You can use a phone. You can use a tablet. Some things that they aren't super compatible with are cheaper tablets, Chromebooks, uh, Android devices they do work with. Uh, we are an Apple company here. We really love Apple. So we like the you know, we, we like that kind of stuff. But Cricut works with a bunch of different things. But, you know, the point I'm getting at is that you don't just have to use like a desktop computer. You can use a laptop. You can use your smartphone. You can use your tablet if it's, you know, if you put money into it and it's a good quality a tablet or laptop or something like that, it should be very compatible with your Cricut and you should have complete success. Don't feel the need to drop money on a MacBook Pro if you don't think that you're going to be crafting that much. That just doesn't seem reasonable. Just make sure that you guys get a good quality laptop, one that's not 50 bucks on Black Friday or something like that, you know. If you put good in, you'll get good out. So make sure that you do um, be mindful of the products that you do use with it. But I just wanted to open your eyes that you can use it with so many different products, which is so awesome. A really fun fact that you all might not know about the machine on the table right now, which is the Cricut Explore Air 2, is that it can cut upwards of 100 materials. That's incredible. It can cut things from cereal boxes to cardstock to vinyl to vellum. There's so many things that it can cut. It can even cut fabric sometimes. Uh, depending on the fabric, it's kind of picky, but that's okay. We have lots of amazing workarounds with the Explorer 2. If you guys do not have a maker, I will link some of those down below. Miss Becca has worked very hard to help you guys and allow you guys to be able to cut uh, different types of felt and some fabrics with your Explorer 2. So if you'd like to see that, click the link below Below. but even without hacking the system and finding new and innovative ways to you know craft with this machine it already cuts over a hundred materials which is amazing Cricut makers can cut more materials but just think a hundred materials you have to be able to work with on this machine which is really really amazing I cannot imagine you know all those materials if someone were to cut were to try to cut them all that would be amazing but it can cut a lot of different things the next two points I want to make that you might not know about your machine are going to be about the actual machine itself and how it functions. So I'm actually going to switch camera angles so you can see a close up of the inner workings of the machine so we can go through these two points. One of them is about those amazing star wheels and another one is about the actual uh, blade and housing itself. So I'm really excited to share, with, uh, share these with you all because they might be things that you don't already know. Okay, so if you guys see here all these little white rings here these are called star wheels and your star wheels are important because they allow some grip onto your materials when you load in your mat things like vinyl paper even little types of felt uh, like paper thin felt that you can cut with your explore air it needs a little grip whenever you roll that in there it allows it to cut a little bit more accurately and to just have a better grip on your material However, when you have a Cricut Maker, so this particular hack will apply to Cricut Makers and not so much Cricut Explore Airs just because they can't cut it. Uh, but I do have an Explore Air demonstrating it today. Uh, however, if you have a Cricut Maker, it will ask you whenever you use something like basswood, balsa wood, or chipboard to move all of the star wheels to the side. Now, why is that? Well, if we move them all to the side, just like so, you guys will notice now that the uh, rod is completely clear, but let me let you in on a secret, guys. Most of the materials that Cricut makes 
for the knife blade, i.e. chipboard being the most common. Ever wonder why it's 11 by 11 and not 12 by 12 like most other Cricut materials? That is because once you move your star reels over to the side, that takes up about an inch of space. And because you move those over to the side when working with chipboard, you can't have your material go underneath those star wheels. So that is why Cricut has to make it uh, to stop right about here. So that is why your chipboard is 11 inches wide. What an amazing fun fact. Okay, so this next one, guys, is probably gonna blow your mind. Whenever you are learning about a machine, no one really talks about this. I was never taught this. It's just something I experienced after I had made a couple of mistakes and had a couple of project fails. I finally realized why. So it is actually very important to have your housing all the way down in your clamp. Now, for this one, you can see there's a lot of uh, room here in, in between my uh, housing and the clamp right here on this lip on my housing. Um, that is a big, big no-no, but something that so many people do because they're not thinking about it. If you take your fine point blade and you want to pop it in your housing, a lot of people are just going to pop it right in and then think nothing about it. But that little gap right there can mean the difference between a project success and a project fail. So you need to make sure that you are taking that and making sure it's all the way down. So all you'll do is open the clamp, You'll just open that clamp like that and make sure that your blade is all the way down in that clamp. So it's such an easy thing, but something that you might not think about because it's so common to just pop it in there and have it, you know, as is, but it's so important to have that down on your clamp as low as it will go. The reason being, guys, you will have some project fails with the uh, blade not cutting deep or you may be thinking it needs more pressure or something like that, but if the housing is up, then that means the blade is up and that means the blade is not able to cut as efficiently as it could. So think about that guys. It could be a hidden way to have a project fail and we don't want that. We wanna make sure that we minimize project fails and have project successes. So make sure all of your materials um, are being cut correctly. So make sure all of your housings are deep in your clamp as far as they can go. And guys, number 12 might be silly, but I just want to let you guys know you will not be a pro at first and that's okay. Give yourself some grace to be able to learn and to be able to, you know, just soak up all this information and take it one day at a time. If you are a beginner and you're watching this video, learning your Cricut can be daunting. It's kind of like a whole new language. There's terminology and materials to buy and, you know, certain procedures with certain things with HTV and with regular vinyl, with all these types of things, picking and material settings with the dial or in the you know in design space it can be daunting we totally understand and if you guys are interested, we do have an amazing brand new course over at Makers Gonna Learn that is free to all yearly members. It's a challenge on how to master your Cricut in 30 days or less, and you guys will not be disappointed. The very first day is just opening up your Cricut, seeing what's in the box. We teach you guys so many things from how to use uh, you know, regular transfer tape, from how to use vinyl and heat transfer vinyl, how to calibrate your Cricut, you know, how to do everything that you need to do to be able to use your Cricut. 30 days, 30 videos, 30 lessons, completely free to yearly members and you guys will absolutely love it. It is the ultimate course if you are a Cricut beginner with everything that you need to know, all the terminology, all the knowledge, all of the tricks, all the tips, all the hacks, everything you need to know to master your machine from being a day one beginner is in this course. So if you are interested in it, click the very first link in the description below to see how you can become a member of Makers Gonna Learn. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope that you did have fun. I had a lot of fun teaching this to you guys. I hope that some of these surprised you. Leave a comment down below and let me know the one that you are most excited to learn about. Thanks so much guys. Don't forget to give this video a like, leave us a comment and go ahead and make sure you're subscribed and ring that bell if you wanna be notified about more amazing videos like this. See you in the next one, bye.